This is Support is Sexy, episode 568. And today we're going to talk about making room for your feelings. Welcome to Support is Sexy. I'm your host, Elaine Fluker, entrepreneur, author, and founder of Chic Rebellion Media. Five days a week, Monday through Friday, I bring you inspiring women entrepreneurs who share their wins and lessons to help you take your business to the next level. Here we go. Hi, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Support is Sexy coming to you all the way from Prague in the Czech Republic. I've been here for a few days now and getting settled in and it is beautiful. It's much colder than Cape Town, South Africa and Johannesburg, South Africa, which is where I was just last month, if you're listening to this in real time. But now it's November 2018 and I am with my group in remote year in Prague. And as I said, it is beautiful. But this is actually the first episode that I'm recording from here, so I can't wait to hear how it sounds. You know, you've been getting, if you've noticed, a little bit different uh, sound effects, different echoes, different all the things, but we're making it work. We're on the road. I'm enjoying it, and I can't wait to connect with women entrepreneurs here. I already have my eye on a couple, or certainly one, this woman that has this restaurant, or at least I think she owns it. I've been back to it twice already, and I've only been here three days. So that tells you how much that I like this restaurant. But you know, I had a whole different episode planned for you all today. I was going to talk about something completely different or actually play an interview for you. And I decided to jump in with this episode instead, this idea of making sure that you make room for your feelings. So as I mentioned, I'm in Prague. I love it. My roomies and I here in Prague went to the farmer's market today. It was incredible. Got probably way too much food. I get excited at farmer's markets as a vegan or if you're vegetarian, you know, you see the vegetables, you go crazy and act like you're just going to eat all the things. So I bought all the things, but it was so much fun. Afterwards, I strolled to a quote unquote regular grocery store to pick up some things the farmer's market wouldn't have. Oddly enough, avocado. And what else did I get? orange juice, something like that. Anyway, go into the store. The other ladies came back to the apartment. I go into the store by myself just to pick up these couple of things, walking around and just since I'm there seeing what else is in the store. And within the first few minutes, I notice a gentleman who looks to be a security guard. He has the suit security guards tend to wear sometimes, um, the suit tie, which just, I should say just seemed very formal for the grocery store. And at first I didn't really, I noticed him there, but then I noticed him everywhere that I was, right? To the point at the end, because of course now I have to walk around the whole store because I see you following me. So you want to do your job? I'm going to make you do your job. You're going to follow me through this entire store, up and down irrelevant aisles, just so I can have a little fun and get a little evil victory out of it somehow after being humiliated. Anyway, follows me through the store. At some point, I immediately turn around and pretend I'm going to look at something else and he and I are like facing each other. So it wasn't discreet at all. And you might say, well, how do you know he was following you? Or how do you know why he was following you? He was following me, I believe, because I was a black person or maybe a black woman in the store. No one else that I saw in the store happened to be a black person or a black woman. There was no other reason to follow me. I looked normal as far as dress normal. I had on sunglasses because I was coming from outdoors. Nothing conspicuous that I could tell about myself that made me look like, I don't know, I was going to steal the whole store because it wasn't like security guards float around, they look and see what you're doing, etc. This was clearly being followed. So I I might have said something if I thought he spoke English. I figured he might not. I thought he might misinterpret my discussion or gestures or anything else as something else, and it might have become a much bigger thing than it needed to become. Now, this happens to a lot of black people and people of color in general in the United States in other parts of the world, for sure. You get followed around a store, you're in the store, you might not be doing anything out of the ordinary, it's just because you're there and there is either the person thinks it or they've been told to think that. I've had this happen at gas stations and grocery stores, of course. I've had it happen at the local bodega in New York where someone actually accused me of stealing something, not even just following. I've had times in stores that I've loved in New York where I've said, why are you following me? Why is this person following me? The person who knows me behind the counter tries to explain, oh, no, no, they're just seeing if you need help, which wasn't true. Anyway, as you can tell, this has me a little um, hyped up and normally it doesn't. 
And that's the thing. Today, it just really bothered me. And I think it was because, you know, I didn't have a great experience in Sofia, Bulgaria. Actually, overall, I did have a great experience doing all the hiking, all the things outside of Sofia, which were incredible. But I was sexually harassed on the street there. And um, it was a tough, tough thing for me to get over and get through. But there was that. Um, Cape Town was beautiful. Johannesburg was beautiful. I didn't have any experiences like that there. And then a few days here in Prague. And then I'm followed around a store again. This happens so many places. And I had a moment where, well, I sent a message to my uh, the two women I'm living with who happen to be women of color. And I just said, oh, the security guard literally followed me around the whole store. And I did the eye roll emoji. And then I took a picture of him when I was leaving. I just said, say hi to, to the security guard. He didn't see me take a picture, but I sent it to them. And when I got in, one of the young women actually said to me, you okay? You seem really defeated. And I had a moment where I thought about it later. Actually, I didn't think about it in the moment. I said, yeah, I'm fine. I just you know, hate that that happens, blah, blah, blah. But I had a moment where I thought about it later. And I was like, wow, I'm really in my feelings about this. At first, I tried to sort of talk myself out of it. Like, don't be like that. It happens. It happens everywhere. It's not just here, you know, blah, 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 et cetera. But then I thought, said to myself, make room for your feelings. This, for whatever reason, I'm not even going to judge it, upset me today. Other days, it doesn't. It's just what we call a microaggression. Someone following you because they think you're going to steal something just likely based on the fact that you're black or a person of color. It happens over and over and over again. It is a microaggression that chips away at you. Sometimes as a person, sometimes you can brush it off. Today, I couldn't brush it off. It just bothered me. It didn't make me angry. It just bothered me and I had to make room for my feelings. And this is something that I learned from my coach. You guys know if you've been listening for a while, I talk about her all the time, Margot Geller, love her. She has been pushing me to do this a lot more because I have been uh, conditioned or learned as a child to push past your feelings. I never really truly did as I learned later through therapy and other conversations with people like Margot. never really did push past those feelings, always been a sensitive person, child, compassionate, etc. But I was sort of taught to because I think for my parents, they were trained to out of usually necessity, you didn't have time for feelings when you were growing up in Alabama in the 30s and 40s and 50s. You know, you can only imagine what kind of things went on there. Actually, you, can't, you don't have to imagine. You know what kind of things went on there in the States during that time. So feelings, of course, people had them. They were human, but so much was going on that you had to just push past. So for me, I grew up sort of with that, uh, knowing that you're just supposed to push past your feelings or don't be too sensitive, et cetera, et cetera. As an adult, I still struggle with that because I do like everyone else, like you listening, have feelings. But I have always been trying to, maybe not even consciously, I have always um, tried to just, okay, just get over that. Just don't worry about that. Just don't think about that. But that is not healthy. And in this moment today, I think this was the first time I literally said out loud to myself, I just need to make room for my feelings. It's not that I'm going to be down about this all day. In fact, actually, I after I share it with you all, and thank you for listening and let me share it, after I share it with you all, I'm going to let it go. Not going to, I can't say I'm not going to think about it anymore, but it just is something that happened. I didn't get hurt. The security guard didn't get hurt. He did his job. I got my avocado. All is good in the world, right? Just going to move beyond it. Day after day after day, this week, later this week, it probably won't even bother me. But today I had to make room for my feelings. And as Margot told me, you know, she has this thing that she calls, does she want to share? Let me think. Yeah, I guess I can share this. She has this thing that she calls um, scribble and scream. So when you're upset about something, you can just scribble something on a piece of paper. It might sound crazy. It's sort of like people who um, do pillow fights or use those, what are they, foam things where you hit something. You just have to get out that anger or rage at whoever or whatever it is or the circumstance. Just get it out. So she does scribble on a piece of paper, almost like a little kid. And I've done it before and it works. It feels good. I didn't do it today. Maybe I will. But you have just have to do it and get things out. I mean, some Sometimes I do that. It's not a scribble. It's writing or other people do it through boxing in a ring, not a person, right? Or other ways that you can do it to get out that, just that energy, let go of that energy that if you don't make room for those feelings, it just stays trapped inside of you. And you might think you're moving past it, but really you're not. You're not making room for your feelings. You're not allowing yourself to be upset, disappointed, angry, hurt, whatever the things are. You're not creating space for it. You're not, that's not self-care. That's not a way of taking care of yourself. You're just trying to push past it, push past it. Now, eventually, you will have to push past it, move on with your life, and do whatever you need to do. And the, I'm saying all this, I'm, of course, talking about the example from today, 
But for you, whatever you're going through in your life, whatever you're experiencing, whatever the disappointment, whatever the setback and anything else that's going on, make room for your feelings. If you're upset about it, you're upset about it. Okay. Give yourself, you know what? I'm really upset about that. That really bothered me. Whether you say it to the person or the circumstance, you say it to yourself, whether you do a scribble and scream, whether you write in your journal, but make room for your feelings. I think too often, in fact, I know too often we hold things in until they get to a bubbling point or say, if I'm upset about the man following me around for no reason today, and then later I snap on somebody else about something completely innocuous and they're wondering what's wrong with her because I didn't make room for my feelings about the other guy so I'm taking it out on someone regarding something else that has nothing to do with that Have you ever been in that situation? You're working on something with someone and then you make a suggestion maybe, then they snap at you. You're wondering what happened. You have no context. And likely it's not about you. It's probably about something else because they didn't make room for their feelings with that matter. So here it comes at you. Now they're making room for their feelings with you. So this is something that, again, it just came to me as a, well, she's been saying it to me for a while, Marco, but this was the first time that I really embraced the idea today and literally said out loud, okay, that accept me. I didn't like that. I hate having to go through that. I hate going through it anywhere, but I hate first few days in Prague. You know, I'm, there's uh, not a lot of diversity here, which is fine. It's a great city, beautiful. have seen definitely more diversity here than I did in Bulgaria, but still, you're one of the few black people in the store. The man's going to follow you around. You just almost, in some ways, have to accept that that's how it is, right? But some days, like today, it bothered me, and that's okay because I'm a freaking human being. And I have to make room for my feelings. But then I have to keep going and get to work and do the things that bring me joy, like recording this, even though it's a rough topic, but recording this for you, which brings me joy and doing other things like writing, which brings me joy. So all of this adds to who I am as a person and all those things I already know. But again, I still had to make room for my feelings. Otherwise, as I said, it'll bubble over and I'll take it out on someone else or for you, you might take it out on someone else or it can end up making you sick if there are other things that are going on and you're not making room for your feelings in your life, you end up getting sick, you end up getting stressed or in the worst cases when it's extreme things that are going on in our lives, experiencing uh, depression, experiencing uh, suicidal thoughts. I mean, it can get to the extreme and I know about all of those things. So again, it's so important for us to be reminded to make room for our feelings. And what's funny or not funny but how this is all connected to to what I've been talking about a lot recently is about your mindset. And you know, I just fittingly, you always write the teacher, what is it, you you create the things or you preach the, the word that you really need to hear. I've been talking about mindset a lot. I just created a course and released a course around mindset on leveling up your mindset and then finding out or being faced with this moment of making room for your feelings, which to me goes back to your mindset of how you make room for your feelings and how you move beyond the things that hurt you. And the mindset plays a role in that. How do you deal with failure, disappointment, or pain, all those things? What's your perspective on it? So interesting. Things come up, right, when you have this higher awareness about them. And like I said, I'm teaching something that I need to most learn or need to continue to learn. It's an ever-growing process about mindset. So that's an eight-week course about mindset if you want to look into that, levelupmindset.coach. But I mention it because it's so fitting during this time to have this moment today. And maybe this is why it happened. Again, I made room for my feelings, so now I can have a little perspective. But maybe that's why this happened to really push me. Okay, this still happens, and you know that it happens, and it happened to you. Okay, so now what? What do we do? We make room for our feelings. We have this moment. Do we move on? How does it make us a better person? How does it make us a more aware person? And that whole thing. How does it affect the way I decide to see Prague? You know, I talked about with Bulgaria, with the incident, with the person on the street who decided to harass me that day, humiliate me that day. How is that going to make me show up or decide not to show up in the world as a black woman moving about these different cities and those kinds of things? So again, after that, I had perspective. But now I'm being much more conscious about making room for my feelings and not feeling guilty about that, not feeling too sensitive, not feeling any of the things that we label ourselves as or too much like a girl or any of the other things we label ourselves as when we just have feelings. So I said all this, I know I made it about my story, made it personal, but I said all this again to remind you, make room for your feelings and allow other people, your children, your spouse, your partner, whoever, 
to have room for their feelings and whatever they're going through. Because a lot of time people around us hide their feelings from us because either they don't want to worry us or they're embarrassed, etc. So overall in your life, remember, make room for feelings and then decide, you know, have that mindset and then decide, okay, now what? What do we do to heal from this and to move beyond this and to become better people? So I hope this all makes sense. You know, when I record things for you in the moment, I can go on and on and on about them. But again, it really felt like, you know what? I feel like I need to share this with my family, which is all of you today. See what you think about it. And um, let me know actually what you think about it. Leave a review. You know, you can contact me on social media at Elaine Fluker and at Support is Sexy or email if it's something personal, Elaine at ElaineFluker.com. I always love to hear from you, but I want you to remember to take care of yourself and whatever happens, if it's something that has you in your feelings, as they say, you just need to be in your feelings for a little bit. Maybe you need to be by yourself for a little bit or you need to do some other self-care things for a little bit, but it's okay. Make room for your feelings. All right, so I look forward to chatting with you soon. More great interviews coming up from Cape Town, from Johannesburg, still some from Valencia, Spain. Got some good stuff for you. In addition to the women that I continue to talk to all around the world who give me the greatest feelings of all. All right, so until then though, always remember, support is sexy and having it all doesn't mean doing it all alone. And I'll talk to you soon. Take care.